So um, Bridget, she's on this call too. Bridget and I, as you guys know, just got back from Los Angeles last week where we went to the New Leader Conference and it was amazing. It was so fabulous. I want you guys like all to be there next year. Um, <clears throat> and so I have this, you know, I was like, we're going to share everything we learned at the New Leader Conference in one call, which was crazy. So I basically got through, I'm just going to talk about one presentation that we heard. And that's it. Sound good? All right. So, um, what we're going to have to do, and I've got like a strange delay when I'm looking at myself on here, so I don't know if I'm seeming funny to you guys. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to have to have multiple Zoom calls to get through some of this information. I'm not going to present it all to you, um, but some of just the best nuggets and best takeaways that we got, and I don't want to keep you super late for hours and hours, so I just want to give you um, some fabulous nuggets from the first presenter, the first top coach that we heard, not the first presenter that we heard. So I'm going to screen share with you guys. Um, so just give me a minute. Be patient. Am I a little technologically challenged? Okay. Yeah. I have Zoom. Let's see. Oh, we got it. Can you guys see? Thumbs up? Okay. So um, I'm just going to share from our first presentation. So here we are at the New Leader Conference. The, there's Bridget and I with some of the um, other coaches that are in our downline they're Amanda Dewey's personally sponsored coaches too. So um, they're kind of like our cousins, our Beachbody cousins, right? So they all live in Texas. So we got a chance to meet up with them. It was really cool, really beautiful. They gave us all this big spread of delicious food um, that night outside in LA. It was lovely. So um, you all need to be there next year. But what I want to talk to you guys is the takeaways that we got from Michelle Myers. And um, she's a 12-star elite coach. She was super dynamic to hear talk in person. So I want to just talk about the big takeaways that I think are going to benefit you guys the most and really stuck out to me and benefited me from listening to her talk. And her talk was all about purpose, the big P. And she really encouraged us to connect with our purpose as coaches and to get our potential um, coaches to also connect with their purpose and our purpose. So I'm going to explain a little bit more about what I mean about that. Michelle said that the biggest difference between top performers and average performers is a sense of purpose. Um, and what she means by that is, and we'll get into this in a second, but do you really feel connected to what your job is as a coach or is it just a way to um, make money or earn a trip or just get your Shakeology paid for? And yeah, those are purposes, but they're not the type of purpose that's going to take you all the way to the top of the company if that's your desire. If your desire is financial freedom or your desire is to be a 15-star diamond or whatever top performer might mean to you, it might not mean that you want to be at the top of the company and that's fine. But whatever success means to you, your success is going to be greater if you are connected to your sense of purpose. And I know that in this business we have the ups and downs. And I mean, I was working until oh, the very last second on the 31st to try to reach success club. It was a January was a hard month for me and it can be easy in those moments when we feel discouraged to lose our sense of purpose. Our purpose really isn't to um, get six success club points, right? It's to help 
however many people we're trying to help. So um, regardless, I did hit success club, but even if I hadn't, I still achieved my purpose in helping people. So I think that it's really important for us to stay connected to that purpose because that is going to make the difference between being an excellent coach and being an average coach. And she talked about how it's not what we sell, it's what we stand for. And I think that that personally, I think that that's a huge difference between Beachbody and a lot of the other um, direct sales companies that we see, including some of our competitors is we do have a big sense of purpose. It's not, you know, take this pill, use this wrap, drink six shakes a day so that you can have a quick fix. Uh, we don't just puke product, 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 product all over Facebook. It really should be about what you stand for, which is to help other people live healthier lives. And again, if we always remember to reconnect back to our purpose, we're not going to get just caught up in the product and what we sell. And so I really wanted to challenge you guys to truly connect to your why. And not everybody's purpose for doing this business is the same. And maybe your purpose is um, financial freedom, okay? And I don't want you to think that that's a shallow purpose necessarily to make income because, I mean, it is a business and we want to earn money working. But that can't be your only why. What is that going to achieve for your family? Or maybe your um, biggest why is the discount. Again, that's a why, right? But what in particular is the discount on these products going to do to change your health and the way you live your life to its fullest? So I really want you guys to take a couple minutes, and I will too, and I want you to connect to your why. Why are you doing this? job and what is your purpose? Even if you're not actively working yet, what about Beachbody Coaching speaks to you and is your greater why and your greater purpose? So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to give you uh, two minutes just to brainstorm on your piece of paper about what your why is. And I know that we've done this many times, but I feel like you can't ever do it too much. So um, take a couple minutes to jot down your ideas, okay? All right, go. I see lots of pens moving, people thinking, I love it. I'm gonna call on you guys. I'm not gonna make you each share or anything, don't worry. 
don't be the scared kid in class right now who's like, please don't make eye contact with me. Please don't call on me. Um, do I have anybody who would volunteer? I would love a couple of people to volunteer to share their whys with the rest of us if you feel so inclined and if you feel brave enough. I'm seeing, I can't see everybody because of the way the screen share works for me. So, I'll go, Jess. This is okay. Carla. Okay. Hi, Carla. Yay. Hi. Thanks for sharing with us. Okay, so this, I'm just going to pretty much like straight from what I wrote down. Love so it. So I want to help women find that they're worth it, that they're worth taking time for themselves, that they can be more instead of less, to focus on building themselves up instead of tearing themselves down, to stop beating themselves up for a number on a scale or caving to cravings, but rather finding strategies to help them get back on track and work towards their goals. And as moms, that we can be there for our husbands, our kids, and ourselves. That's my why. Wow. Love it. Love it. <laughs> That's like what I was thinking in my head, and mine doesn't look nearly as great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Carla. That was amazing. It's all about the, I, if you guys have never heard of Nia Shanks, like I've been listening to her blog lately and it's kind of like brought this whole thing together for me. So I Nia, highly recommend Nia her. Yeah, it's N-I-A-S-H-A-N-K-S. The one that really got to me is her one, it's like titled something about like how women can be more or something like that. Like that was just like, oh my God, this is like who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> That's what I thought when I was listening to it. Oh. <laughs> You gave me goosebumps. That was a that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. <laughs> That's a one hell of a purpose. So I am proud of you. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Who else wants to share? I won't make everybody share. Don't be scared. I can go. Okay. Thank you, Bridget. My husband's watching The Bachelor in the back and hear it. <laughs> he doesn't know he's busted. Um, so my why is I've made health a priority for myself and know how amazing that is for me. So my goal would be to help more people realize that they can make health a priority because now I have the tools and the knowledge and the motivation to help other people. And I um, kind of surrounded by all sorts of health issues in my own family. Um, cancer runs in my family, diabetes runs in my family, mental health runs in my family. Um, the list goes on. When I go to the doctor's office, I take lots of time filling out the family history section. Um, so I want to do whatever I can to combat those things, and I just want others to be able to do that as well. Um, I also want to empower women that they can make themselves a priority and not feel bad and not feel guilty, and that they can actually be better moms, wives, um, the list goes on, when they can um, focus on themselves. I love it. Thank you, Bridget. That was beautiful. You're welcome. You need to go? Sure. Who's talking to me? This is Meg. Hi, Meg. I can't see everybody on here, so. I can see you. Beautiful. I'm glad. Yeah. So mine has changed, and I really feel like I've had some light bulbs in the last uh, month or so. Um, when I first signed on, it was more about keeping myself accountable. Yada, yada, yada. Everyone's reason, right? And um, I feel like in the last month, it's turned more into um, a vision of lifelong health. Um, when you're older, I'm at the older end of this group. And it's also about connecting, helping people find communities mm -hmm. of support. I know for a lot of us, myself included, that's sort of been a fringe benefit of this whole thing. And if you're coming in on this call new, I hope that you find this too, but uh, this amazing group of women, mostly women, there are a few men with us, but so supportive. Even when we fall flat on our faces, people are here to lift us up and um, not everybody finds that everywhere. And I know um, 
I've always been a people person. I like to connect people. I like to connect to people. And um, just last week, I connected to um, a cousin who's coming in. Um, and, um, you know, a former student who worked with me last year had sent a note. And I just thought, yeah, I think this is really becoming my part of my journey is connecting with people, connecting people to our people, and then just all of the benefits that just feeling connected to a group provides in addition to all the other things that we're getting health wise. And then just that vision for long-term good physical health. Those things you start to think about when you're 50 is closer than 40. I love it, Meg. Thank you. And I, mm -hmm. you hit the nail on the head of the community aspect. I think that that's an incredibly important part of this job and part of the reason our team is so amazing. So thank you. All right. Anybody else want to share? Otherwise I can roll on. I can share mine really quick just because um, I feel like everybody hit on some of the same things, but then we all kind of varied a little bit too. Mine is to help other women, including myself, be the be which is where that accountability piece comes in, I guess, be the best empowered version of themselves. And then um, to create financial freedom for my family, to live debt free so that I can um, provide for my kids while still being home with them. And that's a huge part of my why um, is so that I can stay home with my kids and I have to go back to the classroom. So um, yeah, that's mine. Pretty short and sweet. It's not nearly as beautiful as Carla's. <laughs> so. Um, oh, yes, I'll go. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. I was waiting for other people to talk because I talk a lot, so. <laughs> um, mine is kind of mumble jumble. It's not that perfectly put together, but the three words that came up first for me were confidence, connection, and courage. And um, I'm kind of reading what I wrote. So connect with other women to help them increase their confidence in all areas of their lives, for them to create more self-love, healthy relationships in all areas of their lives, including career, food, exercise, partnership, friendships, um, be inspired as well as empowered to inspire others, nourish their bodies with natural nutrition, and create strength through fitness and exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more, but that's the gist of it. So, I love it. And that's what SHINE stands for, actually. So there you go. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, that's your why. It's perfect, Nicole. Thank you. That was beautiful. Okay. All right. So we've got our whys down. And again, I just feel like it's really important to reconnect with these. I mean, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it takes to really remember, especially when we're feeling frustrated with this business, because everybody does, everybody feels frustrated in this business sometimes to remember that it is, yes, it is a business, but it is also serves a much greater purpose. Um, the big P. So let's see. Whoa. All right. So Michelle Myers also talked a lot about to stop using cheap bait. And um, she made a fishing analogy with this one, which she talked about how you could catch bluegills with your spit, okay, because they're not very smart, and how you don't really buy, probably want to eat a whole bucket full of bluegills. But if you want to catch better fish, you're going to use better bait, right? And just hang with me with this one. <laughs> and what she's talking about is when you are um, recruiting, and even the term recruiting kind of sounds, I don't know, a little creepy, I feel like, when we talk about I'm going to recruit new coaches. And, and it shouldn't. That's just our own attachment that we're putting on with that word, you know, that the connotation that recruiting is a yucky thing. And it shouldn't be because you're extending an invitation to somebody to join what you're doing, which you all told me there's a huge why with why you're doing this. And so she's talking about um, inviting other people to be part of the coaching opportunity and that if you're using cheap bait, in other words, like a get rich quick scheme, 
only the discount. There's nothing wrong with signing discount coaches. We all do it. And many people on this call started out just wanting the discount and they decided to dabble a little bit in the business. But if that's the only thing you're ever offering people is, you know, you could get a discount on Chicology, and that's it, then there's so much more to your purpose, guys, than just offering the discount and that's it. Um, and offering it as just, we've all had coaches sign on, or most of us have, who thought it was a way that they were gonna make a lot of money really fast, and then when it doesn't happen immediately, they quit. Um, so don't use cheap bait, don't spit in a bucket to catch people's attention. You want to be attracting somebody who has a greater purpose like you do. Are you following me now? Okay. So um, what I want us to do right now is I'm going to give you like one minute to write this down, but are you the same person you were when you started coaching or right before you started coaching? Okay. And in what ways have you grown, changed, improved, Girls. benefited? A few more minutes. Okay. From being on our team. Okay. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. I just want you to jot down a list of in what ways have you changed before coaching to now? And even if you've only been a coach for five minutes, something is different in your life because you're on this call right now, right? Surrounded by this group of positive women. So something has changed. Gotta get going to bed, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to pause the share, see how this works. I've never done this before um, because I want to see you guys. This is weird to me to be sharing and not being able to see people. Mm, I don't know how to. Well, that's okay. You guys can see me. I can see some of you. Um, I would love to have two people just share really quickly because I don't want to keep you guys super late. I promise I don't have a super long presentation for you, but I'd love to hear a couple people share how they are different now as a coach than they were before. It doesn't have to be anything monumental. For me, I feel like I could have filled up this whole notebook with ways that my life has changed, but I know that's not everybody's journey is different and that's not the case for everybody and that's fine wherever you're at own that so who would like to share anybody i'll go thank you rachel so i have i just i'll just read what i wrote um Love it. i have grown so much as a person i feel like there was a void in my life and I never really knew what it was until I came across this opportunity. 
And I feel like that void has now been filled. I'm a better mom. I'm a better friend, a better wife, and a better overall person. I wake up with a sense of purpose and a passion for what I do. I am confident and fulfilled. Thank you. You made me cry. That was awesome. Thank you. I'll go. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Okay. So um, this was a good one. Um, I said that I would say that since the beginning, um, a more increased self-confidence and being in belief, um, the fear of worry of sharing that belief is gone and a refurbished purpose that I felt was lost in the shuffle and hustle of being a mom, being a wife, being a friend, being a teacher. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, I have my two people share. I would love to hear everybody's purpose, but I don't want to keep us too late. Those were amazing. Um, what I want you to think, dig down deep right now in your brain, in your heart, are you leading with the sense of purpose when you invite others to be a coach? Or are you just offering the discount? Are you just looking for anybody who's got $16 a month and a pulse, a warm body, so you can hit diamond or so you can meet your goal of signing three coaches that month? Or, and I know that our team is obviously amazing and we're not ones that are putting pressure on each other to, to recruit so many or, you know, it, that's not the way we are, but I know sometimes we can feel caught up in wanting to get more coaches because we feel like that's the only way, you know, we recruit 10 and then one is going to want to work and this is the way we're going to be successful. And it's okay, guys, I'm telling you to grow slower. I grew slow and in part because I feel like I've attracted and recruited and held on to a community of really amazing women with a really strong sense of purpose. And I would rather keep in mind my purpose and what I love about coaching and how it's changed my life when I invite other people to this opportunity than only be offering, um, you can make money, you can get your shake at a discount, you can get your shake for free. Okay, these are, these are true things and it's not a bad thing to offer, but it shouldn't be the only thing you're offering. And I know sometimes when I read through scripts that people are using to invite someone to like coach open house or coaching opportunity, they'd be like, I'd love for you to learn more about how coaching's changed my life, but nobody tells anybody what, how coaching's changed their life. Even just two sentences, what Sarah said just blew me away. And if you would just include that in your invitation, it can make a great, huge difference to actually lead with that purpose and not just make it feel generic. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Love it. She talked about, Michelle talked about quality coaches who stick around. Um, she talked about, and that's you guys on this call, quality people are gonna stay loyal to your team and to this business because they believe in the people and its purpose and their purpose, even before they're making much money and even when things get hard. When I first started this business almost four years ago, guys, I was making on average, maybe a hundred dollars a week. And I worked my ass off for that hundred dollars a week. I worked a lot, man, maybe only like an hour a month, an hour, half an hour to two hours a day. Okay. But I was putting in a lot of time. I felt and a lot of effort to only make a hundred dollars a week, but I had a purpose and I believed in the people I was working with. I believed in my very first coaches that I signed on with me and I believed in my upline and I kept pushing even when things got hard and I hung in there and the coaches that I've signed who've done like 20 other MLMs before doing Beachbody who give up the minute they can't sell Shakeology and quit are not the people who you want to stick around on your team anyways. Okay. You want people with purpose who are going to hang in there and realize that it's not going to be success overnight, but that, it is going to happen if they just stick with you and believe in two core things. Number one, our company makes a difference. And number two, I make a difference. If you believe, truly believe that you make a difference, 
when you offer this opportunity to other people to be a challenger or to be a coach, that's hard to turn down if you believe that you make a difference. If you're wishy-washy about it or you're not so sure or you're not really convinced that this is a great opportunity for somebody, that there's no reason that they're going to be convinced of that either. So quality coaches as well as quality challengers, actually, because we love those loyal challengers who stick around for challenge group after challenge group. Even if they don't want to be a coach, they believe they're connected to the people and the purpose. And that's why they hang out and stick around and hang in with you. So really keep that in mind when you're inviting people and when you're feeling that frustration that we all feel when a coach or a challenger quits immediately when they don't get results because everybody's been there, right? Not if you've been there. Okay. Coach or challenger quits because they're like, this sucks. I didn't sell any challenge. You know, I didn't sell any challenge packs. I'm not going to get rich or a challenger quits because Shakeology is too expensive and they didn't lose enough weight the first month. Okay. Those are not quality people who you need to stick around anyways. If you just keep looking for the people who will be connected to your purpose and be connected to this group, they're going to stick around and um, that's how you're going to find success. So I really think it's important to also keep in mind in your mind, do you really believe that our company makes a difference and that you make a difference? Because if you believe in both those things, that confidence will shine through, okay? And the last thing she talked about that I wanted to share, and I loved this, is that products create revenue, but people create passion. Oh, this isn't the last thing. I think I've got one more slide. Sorry, guys. I'm, <laughs> it's late for me. Um, products create revenue, but people create passion. What about this business are you truly passionate about? And yes, this kind of touches on your why, and it kind of touches on the ways you've changed as a coach, but like what makes you, Sarah talked about getting out of bed, and Rachel talked about getting out of bed with a sense of purpose and passion. What makes you feel passionate about this business? I want you to jot down just a couple things that you're passionate about. All right, guys, ladies, I don't think there's any gentlemen on the call that I can see. Give me something that you're passionate about. I'm going to say I'm passionate about my friends on this team. There's many things I wrote down, but that's one thing that I am passionate about that makes me want to hop on a Zoom call is to connect with you guys. Who's got another one? I'll share. This is Kate. Hi, Kate. Um, I'm very passionate about empowering people to learn um, just about health and fitness in general and to really push hard and to challenge themselves. Um, mm -hmm. Just teaching and learning in general is my passion. Love it. That's perfect. I actually wrote down um, the teaching part of it and I also wrote down the challenge of it. The challenge of just learning the business is really intriguing to me and helping people who haven't had success before that challenge. So I I agree with you. I second that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Who else has something that makes them feel passionate about this business? I have a couple. Yeah, Mandy, share with us. Okay. Um, mine are pretty similar, but um, just having a challenger finally get it and having something click for them where they start to see results and start believing in themselves. 
And then second to that would just be having a coach under me that gets that same success with the challenger and has that like awesome moment where, you know, they've helped somebody. Yeah. So that makes me want to keep doing it. Agreed. Even when things are crappy, like I know you were pushing hard in January and it was hard. Right. <laughs> but it makes you keep, you know, that sense of passion, that purpose keeps you yeah, going. Definitely. Who else has another one for me? I do. It's Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Um, for me, kind of like Mandy, seeing people change and grow, actually seeing them reach their goals, um, and then just growing in confidence. Like I've just seen Marla blossom and go crazy with this, like I knew she would. So seeing her success is really exciting for me as well, and not because I'm really you know, getting that much from it, but it's just like, man, she's an inspiration to me. Yeah, right. um, she's kicking butt. <laughs> so are you though. <sighs> oh, thanks. Um, and then seeing people's like, well, I guess this is kind of like with Marla, seeing people's passion and drive ignited, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing them be empowered. And then I also just like getting uh, the motivation and learning from the team and kind of like you said, just learning how to make it all work. Yeah. It's awesome. This is a smart group of women. And so I, I think that I like watching you guys figure it out and grow. That's amazing. Thank you. Anyone else want to share something that they feel passionate about with this business? Well, I just, I love this, this sense of community. Um, just being yeah. surrounded by all of you amazing women. You just all inspire me and motivate me. But it's also just so touching to when people come forward and that you don't even think it's like on those days when you think nobody's watching and nobody cares and nobody's reading your posts. It's those days when, when somebody will just send you a message just saying, you know, you, you inspired me to go for a run today or you inspired me to, you know, to, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. That's just, that fills my cup. It's amazing. It's yeah. really cool. Thank you. What I really want to encourage you guys to do is to keep this passion in mind, at the forefront of your mind. Write it down somewhere so you can see it when you are having a, a rough day or a rough month, okay? Because I think it's important to reconnect along with your why and along with the way you've changed. But like, what makes you want to get out of bed and do this job? What makes you want to make time for it after a super busy day of teaching full time and being a mom and being a wife? You know, then you've got to come home and make time for Beachbody too. There's got to be something in there that, that makes you feel passionate to drive you. And I think that that is also the same passion that's going to attract challengers and coaches to you. If you feel that passion and you convey it to other people, they're going to want to be part of what you're a part of. And so it's really important to keep that in mind. And the last, I think this is really the last thing I'm going to talk about. <laughs> when you have new coaches, even if you only have one, or maybe you don't have any coaches yet, but we'll talk about your challengers too. Either way, leading with love, I think is one of the greatest takeaways that I had from Michelle's presentation. She talked about how fear contracts and makes us small and how love expands and makes our network work bigger and that our best investments are made when we look into the interests of others. So I really think that one reason our team is so amazing and so successful is because I always feel the love with you guys. It's not a negative place to be. Um, you are connected with your why, you enjoy helping others, and that's the most important thing. I think if you lead with love, your challengers and your coaches, you're gonna find success. It might not happen overnight, but it is bound to happen because you're passionate about what you do and you're gonna wanna share that love. and it makes you come across as less salesy or less pushy because you're not, because you're leading with love. And I just think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind all the time with this business. And I thought that was a great takeaway. So I wanted to share with you guys. And I think that is it. So I'm going to stop my share. Like I said, I could have talked all night about the stuff we learned at New Leader Conference, but we've got, a, we've got so much to share with you. We're just going to share it in chunks 
here and there. So just be grateful that I did not talk about the uh, compliance policies and procedures for compliance all night. That'll be a different call, don't worry. It's really exciting. <laughs> um, any questions, takeaways, anything you wanna pick my brain about? We've got uh, just a couple minutes. So I have a quick question. Yes. So what was there one like aha statement that happened at, at the conference that you like circled and put stars next to that was like, okay, this is, this is big. Was there like a light bulb? <laughs> Am I totally putting you on the spot? Oh, no, it's good. There was a whole bunch of light bulbs. And oh, I'm sure. In fact, that circles back to when, um, Bonnie Engel was talking. I thought this was really interesting. She talked about, um, so I'm answering your question, but I'm also kind of not. <laughs> Bonnie Engel talked about how she doesn't believe in aha moments. She believes in action moments. And I thought that was really interesting because um, it related, I really related to me because I'm really good at this personal development piece of this business. I didn't used to be at all. I spent like a year and a half never doing any PD. Started doing PD. My business started to grow. My paycheck started to grow. My team started to grow. So these are all positive things, right? But I am the queen of having aha moments and then not doing anything about it, right? Like, oh, yeah, that's amazing. And I write it down. And then I don't do anything to actually take action. And so I think that that, I mean, there was a million aha moments that I had. <laughs> but I keep reminding myself, like, an aha moment isn't as helpful as an action moment. I thought that was really interesting. Like if you don't do anything with that personal development, if you go to summit and you take a 10 notebooks full of notes and you come back and you're the same exact coach as when you left, you can have a hundred aha moments, but it's not really serving you. Does that make sense at all? Am I freezing? Oh, you're there. I'm there. Okay. Yeah. You guys are all frozen on my end. So, um, that would be one, I think. Bridget, was there one that, um, I don't know if anybody else, can anybody else relate to that, having aha moments and then not actually do anything about it? Yeah. They mentioned that on the wake up call. Mm-hmm. morning, that Bonnie Engel had mentioned that, just like briefly. But yeah. I was like, yeah, action step. Action <laughs> moment, not aha moment. Yeah, I'm queen of that. So that was an aha moment that I had. How's that for ironic? <laughs> Aha uh -huh moment. I, there was many. Um, Melanie Metro talking about, and I don't know if Bridget can would piggyback on this or, you know, second this, but she may have something else that was a really big game changer for her. But I felt like Melanie Metro, she's, as many of you guys know, the top coach for the second year in a row. Um, but just to, she talked a lot about managing your time and owning your time. And that is something that I've had a hundred aha moments about, and I really struggle with taking action. And so I felt that was really useful to me. And she also talked about knowing who your ideal coach is, um, rather than just looking for warm bodies and really speaking to that ideal coach for your team. And those were some really key points for me that I feel like I, had a lot of aha moments. Now I need to take some action moments on. Bridget, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to, that really stuck out to you. And now I'm putting you on the spot. No, I was just looking my notes over. Um, my notes are in the other room. I could sneak off. And grab I think, you know, keeping things simple, we often make things way too complicated. We overthink. Um, so just do. You learn from your mistakes. So if you try something and it doesn't work, um, delete it. If no one responds, delete it, try something new, you know, in a different way. So just, you know, try to keep it simple and try not to overthink. Um, was kind of just a really good one to keep in mind because we, we do do that. We think, oh gosh, what are people going to think if I say this? Or, um, you know, obviously you want to think before you post something, you're not just going to post something without it having some sort of meaning, but just try to keep it more simple. Um, Mm -hmm. Like Jess said, you know, Melanie and her systems was amazing because I came home um, with a list of things that I'm already starting to work on because I need to get some systems in place. Mm -hmm. um, last year was my first full year, so I 
feel like it was just me doing, doing, doing. And so this is my year to create the systems for my team so that they can just kind of hop in um, and it's not so much scrambling. So that just opened my eyes up to a lot of tools that I need to get into place. Um, and that makes me excited about it because I could visually see, you know, what they need to be instead of just having the ideas in my head. Um, I think a couple other things real quick. And one of Bonnie's that stuck out to me were, um, you know, we all get a lot of objections, right? So she takes them publicly and she'll just pick one and she'll post about it. And I thought, what a great idea. So let's say you always hear, I don't like, no, um, what's, what's a good one? I like to chew my food. I like to chew my food. I did that yeah, one. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, she took one and said, I like to chew my food. You know, I absolutely do. However, you know, I drink this super, you know, this daily dose of dense nutrition, whatever you want to call it. I never talk about Shakeology on my page, but you guys may address the term Shakeology, um, but I always keep it mysterious. So I would just talk about the, the drink that I have every day or the, the meal that has 70, you know, plus nutrients and vitamins that I can't get in food. And don't go on and on and on about all the details, but just how it makes me feel and how I've changed because that's what people want to see. They could go and, you know, l look on Google and find a bunch of shakes that they can have that are going to list all of the, you know, terms that you're going to use and all the benefits. But really, they want to know why you drink it and what it does for you and how it makes you feel, right? So maybe if we think about lessening some of the, um, longer language to describe things and just talk more about you. Why do you like it? Why do you drink it? What time of day do you drink it? How do you make it? How does it make you feel? Shakeology is just one example, obviously, but even with your workouts, you know, while you're doing a program, how does it make you feel? What, you know, some days are stinky. Some days are really good. Just jot down your, um, your journey and just kind of take little snippets and share it. You know, objections are great to share because when people are going to kind of watch and go, oh yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I haven't really thought about that. Another thing Melanie does is she does a program before her challengers and she takes notes. I felt this on day three of hammer and chisel. She'll take notes so that when she starts a challenge group, she plugs that into her, her talk that day with them, like, all right, it's day three, you're going to feel sore. Um, it's day, you know, I thought, what a great idea. I often start before if it's a brand new program, but I don't do that. I don't take notes um, so that I can directly talk about where they're at in that week. So that might be kind of something fun. I love that. Um, I love that. Another, Bonnie was really good about what kind of leader do you want to be? Um, you know, make sure that you're very clear about your expectations and list them out. You know, she has a whole sheet, like, here's, here's the deal. If you're going to get one-on-one -on -one calls with me, you better be hitting success club. Um, she just lays it all out in the very beginning when you join her team on um, clear expectations. It's not rude. It's not, um, it doesn't come across as, you know, pushy, but she's just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm running my own company, my own business. I have a lot of, you know, things on my plate. And so if, if you're going to work, you kind of need to get there to, to get my time. And she just kind of lays everything out. So she's like, if you're a hard worker, you're going to attract the hard workers. So that was kind of something that made me think a little bit. Agreed. Last thing is just, you know, we hear this all the time. But just put your blinders on. You know, don't compare. Mm -hmm. Like Jess talked about, your why is very different than other people's. Your, your passion is going to be different. Um, so don't compare to other coaches. Don't copy posts. Um, we see that a lot. Some, you'll like someone, oh, I like what she said, and you'll just take it because you're in a rush and you're going to post it. But that's not really you and what you would say. You could, you could borrow the idea from somebody and tweak it with your own words, but I would never go and just grab someone's and just share it um, as your own because it's probably not going to work for you. 
um, because it, it just really speaks to that person personally. And a lot of it is personal things that we post on there. Um, so don't compare, don't, don't think what works, you know, it's, we always share ideas and say, Hey, try this. But, um, just know that it's all, it's all everyone's own journey and it's going to look a little different. So try not to compare. And I know that's hard and we get excited by others success and that's helpful. Um, because I think that's what helps us move forward as we look at people up to, you know, that have been doing this longer and, and that definitely helps us, but try not to, to get into that comparison mode because that can also hinder you. I agree. We are all, we, are, everybody struggles with comparison. So, and look at the top coaches. They're all really, really different. And everybody on this call is really, really different. But if you lead with a sense of passion and purpose, you'll succeed. It's just a matter of time. But everybody's timeline is going to be different, too, because everybody's life is different and priorities are different. So, oh, as you could tell, Bridget and I could probably talk about this all day, couldn't we, Bridget? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I hope, guys, thank you, Bridget, for sharing your... I mean, there's so many aha moments now turning into action moments, of course, but that was a great question, Rachel. Thank you. Um, we are closing in. It is 930. So I have had you guys for an hour, which is longer really than I thought I would keep you. But I hope guys that um, this was helpful. Yes. I don't know if there's anything in the chat box. i sorry. I didn't look. Uh, it's freezing up for me. Can anyone open the chat box? Yeah, Gina said, um, my Gina's speaker isn't working and she said oh. her two are the woman I've met and connected with and the drive for personal development and the importance of it. And I think that was for um, change or passion. I forget which one, Gina. Oh, got it, yep. That's it. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, guys. My Zoom is being really clunky tonight. So um, thank you guys so much. I hope this was helpful to you. And I just encourage you to um, really connect with your passion and your why and your purpose and how coaching has improved and changed your life when you are inviting people to and how Beachbody has changed your life when you're inviting people to join challenge groups or join your team, because I just believe so much in the people on this call. And I know that you have so much to offer besides, you know, cheap bait as Michelle Myers would say. So I really appreciate you being on the call and I will post a recording. If you have any um, questions or anything, just holler at me. Okay. And look out for more to come. Cause we got a lot more to share. Lot on more to come. This was just like one teeny snippet. So Thank you guys. Have a good night and thank you, Bridget, for sharing too. Thank you. Everybody. All right. Good night.